Today's lecture is about Candace Owens. This was recommended to me by one of the Lady Saints, one of the official members. She had mentioned that she saw an interview with Candace Owens, and you guys have mentioned Candace Owens to me a lot. And I'm not a fan of hers, I don't observe her work, but I figured I'd look into it so that I could give you a little bit of feedback. Um, per usual, I'm collecting all of the TP in the hotels because I'm thrifty. Well, let's, let's talk Candace Owens. Number one, anytime you're speaking about a figure such as Candace Owens, who's pretty much regarded as a thought leader, not because she's an intellectual, not because she has original ideas, nor is she a philosopher. She's actually made her name in the way that a lot of modern thought leaders make their name, which is to be controversial. And so Candace Owens, in actual fact, is one part controversy. She's another part meaningful facts. But what you'll notice about her particular brand of controversy is that it's typically targeted at the African-American ethnic group, which is fine. There are a lot of things the African-Americans need to hear that they don't want to hear. Is Candace Owens one of the first to give hard truth to the African-American population? Absolutely not. Bill Cosby, historically, has been kind of the leader in that. But Candace Owens is popular not because African Americans made her popular. She's popular as what some call a far right um, commentator, right? You know, much of her work is on Fox News. And the reason for that is because a lot of the conservatives on Fox News have things that are, you know, true in their heart that they want to express. And they can't say it without being demonized. One, because they're white women or white men and they would like to avoid being called racist. And so Candace Owens can speak the same truth without being demonized. Actually, she's still demonized, but it doesn't stick as well to call her racist. Now, the question is, are some of the things she's saying racist, hateful, discriminatory, bigoted, idiotic? Well, some of the things she's saying are just factual. Black folks are very sensitive and emotional people. However, some of the things she's saying are foolish, and she's saying them just to get notoriety. I know that this is true because when you look at Candace Owens and her background, you find that a lot of the things she's tried to do, even in the commercial sector, have really been circled around attention-grabbing you know, marketing schemes. So for example, she created a social media platform where you can dox trolls and cyber bullies by putting their information out and recording publicly who they are. In that case that she did that, it turned out she ended up being doxed, which is that your information put out publicly, your address, phone number, and things like this. So she admittedly, she was in an interview and said, you know, this one right-wing guy reached out to me and gave me some encouragement, and I listened to some of the things he said, and I became a conservative overnight. Well, it's highly unlikely that one in advanced age, you know, in their late 20s, has a radical shift in mindset. Certainly, as an educated female, she was not unaware of the right or conservatism, and this was not a new thing to her. What she did find is that anytime you can be the one who stands out, even if you're saying the same thing as everyone around you, but you look different than them, and what you're saying is unexpected from you giving your identity, well, surely you're going to get a little bit more acclaim, right? For example, if Candace Owens saying exactly what she is saying was a white male or a white woman, nobody would care. No one would think she's impressive. The reason that she's so well regarded is because she is a mouthpiece for white conservatives. Conservatism has a lot of meaningful points. In fact, there was a time I would have said, you know, I'm conservative, but being that conservatism in America has broken down and been defiled in such a way that you have conservatives who would say that certain lifestyles, they're calling it, are just fine, it shows that they have no regard for the family, which has historically been the bedrock of conservatism. 
Um, Candace Owens has been on record saying things that are meaningful that I can agree with. Like, for example, she says that nationalism is important, which I agree. There's nothing wrong with being proud of the nation you belong to, protecting the borders of that nation, protecting the values of that nation, because undoubtedly, each nation has a culture. And if you allow people to come into your nation without acclimating or assimilating at any level, then your nation becomes watered down and basically becomes a mixture of all of the other places those peoples came from. And if those places they came from have inferior education or a depressed economy, well, then you're bringing those people in to lower the quality of culture and living in this country that you're in. So, you know, I think that makes sense. She says it in very controversial ways. She's also said some things that are fairly idiotic. Um, and usually they come out in the form of a tweet that later gets retracted or deleted. But what you should quintessentially understand about Candace Owens is that she's not a true ideological figure. For example, yours truly, I'm clearly ideological because I have an ideology called Marquetism. You see, it's a whole system of living and thinking of philosophy that is original to me. In her case, when you hear her speak, she speaks of the left and of the right, the Democrat and the Republican. She's playing a game of politics. And it's important for her to align within one of these institutions or against one of these institutions because that's what pays. So you have to understand that undoubtedly there's an economic driver. The challenge with Candace Owens is that she'll never be an effective leader of any people, conservatives, whites, blacks, liberals, because she doesn't quite fit, nor does she have the high level of sincerity that people look for in true leaders that you will follow. You might listen to her as a truth speaker, as an entertainer, but few will follow her as a proper leader. Why? Well, her first identity of African American. I personally never trust any African American, especially an African American woman who perms or straightens her hair because you're literally using unnatural processes, chemicals, uh, lies, or hot combs to remove the true mark of your African identity, which is your kinky hair that grows naturally up toward the sun. And you comb it out with a hot comb and now it falls down as though it is dead. That is not a black person who's proud to be a black person. And that goes out to Candace Owens, as well as all of the hair-hatted hooligans walking around with these wigs looking terrible. Shout out to Oprah Winfrey. A billionaire still looks like a clown with this fake hair, which shows self-hatred. And that goes not only for Candace Owens, even for the white women who are bleaching blonde when they're really not blonde. So she will never be a leader of black people because she's not even in touch with her blackness. She won't be a, a leader of women because she is against feminism. Shout out to her for that because gender feminism has been a very dangerous thing, not only to women, but also to men and to family and the society at large. The idea that being a mother is not a worthy pursuit because there is such incompetence in motherhood and fatherhood. We're seeing the direct result today in children who can't even identify which gender they are. Now, so she won't be a leader to black people because she doesn't even really love her blackness like that. It's evident in her hair. Number two, she won't be a leader to women because she's against feminism and that's the wave right now. It's what's popular among the females right now. Conservatism is not so popular among women. Um, number three, she won't be a leader of the whites because she's, or the white conservatives because she is not quite a good mascot. You know, one of the reasons I refrain from calling myself a conservative is because the truth is a lot of them are racist. But here's the kicker. One thing Candace says that's true. She says the leftists, the liberals, are racist too. And she's a thousand percent correct. She is pretty bright. Not, not a real intellectual in that she comes up with original thought or truly insightful analyses. But she does speak clear truths that people are afraid to mention. One of the things that's clear about the racism on the left, which is less spoken about, because they're always talking about Black Lives Matter, but what the left is really interested in doing is forcing black people to assume the culture of white liberals. You see, how is it that you're a white liberal 
who loves black people, but you won't let black people be as they are and enjoy their own culture. Hip hop culture is the prevalent culture among black people, yet you won't let us speak the way we speak. Hip hop music is a very raw thing where people say what's on their mind and it's often vulgar and it's street oriented and certainly it's not in favor of those who consume fruity pebbles. Uh, but you're in favor of black people. That's impossible to be in favor of black people when most of what the white liberals believe is that they should brainwash you into using the gender pronouns they recommend. They should sanction your language and hip hop music is about freedom of speech. So I highly doubt that they like the hyper masculine nature of the black male in the urban environment, which is where most black males are. And she's pointed out the fact that the left is racist but not unpacked how and why. So Candace Owens is, a, is an interesting figure. I think she has a shelf life only because she doesn't actually stand for anything real. She's really doing what pays. You know, she found that she can get paid saying the things she says, but just similar to um, the young lady from Clueless, what was her name? Dion, she played Dion. Stacey Dash. Stacey Dash. Similar to Stacey Dash, you know, she's playing the Stacey Dash role with a little more intellect, but there's a shelf life on that, and, you know, she's going to continue to come under fire, and then eventually she will be something of the past, because the only way she maintains relevance is by jumping on to things that are hot topics and controversial. You can't maintain a career out of that. You actually have to have a core of something that people can find sincerity in, um, and... I don't find that in her. I do find great insight, but if you look at a lot of her comments that have gained her attention, you find that she is the Takashi 6 9 of politics. Um, would I prefer her over OC, what's that, that Latina woman who's brain dead? She used to be a bartender. She's now like a leading Democrat. I can't even remember her name, but I, I prefer uh, Candace Owens to her. But. Here's another example of Candace Owens lacking integrity. And I don't say this to trash her, rather I just say it to, to point out that if you follow someone, follow someone who is, you know, they're making errors because they're human, not errors because they're indiscriminate in what they will do for attention. She tried to found a movement called Blexit, which was the idea of black people making an exit of something. Well, one, you can't really found such a movement when black people don't follow you in significant numbers, number one. Number two, she created a clothing line to go with it, which shows that she's a profiteer. You see, politics and clothing lines don't quite go together very well, right? Um, this is something an entertainer would do rather than a political leader, which is an indicator that she's trying to make a grab at a buck. And I'm a true capitalist. I don't have anything wrong with making a buck. But here's the thing, she lied and said that Kanye West was the designer of the logo and the fashion line, which turned out to not be true, and Kanye went on public record saying, she's lying. So that's a clear indication that she tried to use his big name to make her some money. And that shows a lack of integrity, because A, she called him a friend, which he clearly turned out that they're not friends. And then B, she lied and said that he designed it, which he didn't. And C, when you're supposed to have a proper political movement, you're really trying to make a fashion line to make a buck. And there's nothing wrong with making a buck, but there is something wrong with dressing up your businesses in, in terms of like a, a do-gooder movement, which it wasn't. So I think that she has a shelf life, and I surmise that in five years, you'll say, Candace who? Um, so those are my thoughts on I'm now going to uh, look at your cash apps and your PayPals and answer your questions, saints. So go ahead and drop those in now. And I appreciate those who tune in and, you know, show appreciation for the thoughtful work that we do here, which is oriented on giving you meaningful information that will help you with your prosperity. So let's see what we got on. That guy comes through on Cash App. He writes, peace to the saints, just paying tuition. Truly appreciate that. We always say pay what you owe. And as a man, that is hugely important in life as nothing comes free to a man. On PayPal, Pavindran writes, peace to the saints. Truly appreciate it. He's consistent. That's love. 
Nathaniel comes through, he writes, peace to the saints. And peace to the saints, you dig? Shout out. The whole movement is here. Appreciate it. Looks like we are all caught up. And we got a lot of content coming out. And by the way, um, we do have our conference this weekend. So I look forward to embracing all the saints who will be here with me uh, in person. It's very exciting. And uh, also, if you live near LAX, do shoot me a DM on um, IG. If you live near LAX and you can actually drive there, because I've been trying to call border security because one of the saints came in from Australia and the uh, government is actually holding him uh, low key, holding him hostage. His phone, they won't give him access to his phone. So I need to get through uh, to help him out and they're not returning the call. So if you can go in person and maybe talk to border control or customs and have them call me or get a phone number I can call them on, uh, it would be appreciated if you live near LAX. Otherwise, we're gonna end this the way we always end this with the creed of assassin. Repeat after me. Alexa, close drapes. Okay. We're going to end this with the creed of assassin. Say this with full conviction wherever you are, knowing that this is true of you. The creed of assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Oh yeah, 